For some insight, let's turn now to John Quelch. He's a professor at the Miami Herbert Business School. Great to have you on the program. First of all, why does China's climate policy matter to us all? Uh, as uh, your lead indicated, uh, China and the U.S. are the two biggest emitters of uh, emissions. And uh, accordingly, their leadership, their collaborative leadership is essential to uh, setting a path forward for the rest of the world. Uh, China, of course, is the factory to the world, um, is responsible for around about 33 uh, percent or so of uh, global emissions. Uh, but in fairness, uh, that percentage is roughly in parallel with the percentage of global manufacturing uh, for which China is responsible as well. Uh, as your reporter indicated, uh, China has made great investments and great strides in solar and also in wind power as well. And uh, uh, it sets a table, I think, for a very good dialogue between these two uh, political leaders, experts in the energy field, who have known each other uh, for many years. And I'm expecting out of this visit a joint statement will emerge. And what do you think that um, the, the wish lists are for both sides? What will Kerry wanting to be get a, getting out of China? And you know, what will China want to see from the US? What are the most contentious areas that they're going to need to, to discuss? So uh, the combination of uh, COVID disruption to supply chains, including energy supply chains, plus the Ukraine conflict, uh, has resulted in energy security at the national level becoming a much more important issue. Uh, so China last year uh, issued the largest number of uh, permits for new coal-fired plants that it's issued for many years. Um, coal is a very important source of emissions and a source of great concern um, from the U.S. point of view. Uh, on the other hand, from China's point of view, um, there are tariff barriers to uh, solar panel uh, sales in the U.S. And uh, in addition to that, uh, there are, as your lead indicated, uh, differences of opinion over the uh, financing of uh, developing countries' commitments to uh, green economy initiatives in their geographies. Um, there are a couple of other issues that I'm sure uh, Secretary Kerry will uh, bring up mm -hmm. related to sure. deforestation and uh, methane emissions, uh, and I'm sure there'll be equal uh, tactical issues on the Chinese side. You mentioned that China has returned to coal, but the U.S. has also just approved one of its largest oil and gas drilling projects in recent years. Talk to us a little bit about that tension and balance between, you know, growing the economy, but also sticking to and raising the, the green agenda. Yes. Uh, so the green agenda, as I indicated, has been principally hampered uh, not only by comparative cost economics, uh, but also by uh, this uh, concern for national security um, with respect to food, with respect to health, with respect to energy. Um, it's across the board. And unfortunately, energy has suffered in this regard because obviously in the U.S. context, there's been more uh, pressure for permitting uh, new drilling uh, in areas that previously were protected. Uh, and at the same time, as I said, on the Chinese side, there's more uh, interest in uh, leveraging existing coal capacity in uh, China. All right. John Quelch, so much, thank you so much for your insight. Professor at the Miami Herbert Business School. Thank you.